Mega build? Mega build? Are you serious? Mega build 2? It's here? Finally? You damn straight it's here. Don't go away. Hey everybody, it's Paul from Fat Guy Productions coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And yes, indeed, it is Mega Build 2 today. I'm not going to say anything more. This is a long video. It's about an hour. It's worth every second, okay? So I'm going to shut up and let's get right to it to shorten this up as much as possible. Let's go. Man, oh man, I cannot begin to tell you how excited I am that this project is finally here. I've, I've been thinking about doing this one for a very long time. And we're going to be taking a plain old green light van and turning it into the ambulance from Mother Jugs and Speed. Now, before I start getting called out and get a bunch of hateful posts and stuff like that, this has nothing to do with Bill Cosby, okay? So you can like him, you can hate him, you can do whatever you want to do. This is about a cool movie vehicle, and that's all this is. So please, let's just leave the, the political and hateful comments out, and let's just enjoy this for what it is, because it's going to be an epic mega build. So these uh, green light vehicles are, are all very similar to the M2s in that they are uh, far more detailed than your average die-cast car. They have a lot of pieces, and I guess they actually tout how many pieces are in their vehicles. Um, so after you get the base off, you're faced with a myriad of little parts, and most of them need to either have the posts scraped away or some kind of an adhesive removed or you got to bust out your Dremel, but you've got a lot of parts to, uh, to get out of there. So we'll go ahead and use my little rotary tool and we'll get all that stuff uh, out of the body. So how did I land on this uh, M2 van? Well, I had the project in mind for a long time, and this is like the third or fourth van I've bought thinking it would be the one for the project. Um, but in the end, this one was the closest to what I needed and offered the easiest conversion. It had all the ground effects, and they were conveniently located on the uh, base of the model. The grill was uh, designed in such a way that it would lend itself well to uh, converting it to the quad headlight uh, setup on Mother's Ambulance. Um, it really had the right body shape for the ambulance. Um, there was really only two things that were uh, major problems. One, there were not side windows on the uh, uh, passenger side, which are on Mother's Ambulance. And um, two, it had a sunroof. Now, I don't know 100% that Mother's Ambulance didn't have a sunroof, but, you know, the sunroof really wasn't going to be anything that would be in the way, so I, I didn't worry about it too much. All right, and uh, as to these little uh, air dams on the roof, uh, they were just held on by a couple little pins, so there would just be a little couple little holes there because I wouldn't be reusing those. We could get rid of them. And with the car stripped down, we can go ahead now and get the paint off and really take a look at what we have. Now, I'm not normally a fan of uh, reworking brand new vehicles like this, but uh, this is a very cool little van model with the worst, ugliest mural paint job on it I've ever seen, so it was not uh, really breaking my heart for me to drop this into the warm liquid goo. And you see that did a great job. There's hardly anything left on this body. So uh, the warm liquid goo having done its job, we can go ahead and pull it on out. I'll take it to the sink where I will wash off the extra goo, um, brush away any residual paint, and then we can go ahead and move forward. Okay, so we're back from the sink 
And and the goo did a fantastic job. There's not going to be too much extra cleanup here for me. And uh, all of the paint that's going to go down on this baby is going to be opaque. So uh, I don't really need to worry about, you know, uh, applying zinc or anything like that. All I'm going to do is I'm going to do some of my standard stuff. I'll hit it with the brass bristle brush to uh, just kind of homogenize the, uh, the surface and remove any residual paint flakes. I'll break out my dental picks and I'll go through all the little grooves and notches and stuff and make sure there's nothing left there. And uh, we'll just get a, a really good look at this body and make a few decisions on how we want to move forward. Uh, because there's going to be a lot of decisions. The paint job on Mother's Ambulance is a very complex one. And I already know that I'm going to need to turn to decals. But uh, looking at the paint job, there are some areas where decals aren't going to get it. So this is going to end up having to be a blend of decals and paint jobs. So uh, we're going to be able to figure all of that out. Anyhow, so the uh, base... As you can see, went through the exact same process of the, as the body. It went through the warm liquid goo, and uh, now I'm just doing a little bit of cleanup here. Now let me tell you, I bought a lot of wheel sets and a lot of vehicles looking for the right wheels. And uh, I found this Jeep, and I think these wheels are going to work out. So I'm just taking a quick break from the body to take a look at it, and then we can move on to the next thing over at the computer. And that's going to be a trip to Tinkercad. In Tinkercad, I'm going to model what's going to be the extended roof of the ambulance. I'm also going to model uh, a siren and an air horn, and then I'll put those together into one file, and I'll send that over to my uh, Photon resin printer, and I will print these out. Now, the roof and the sirens I'm feeling pretty solid about, but I'm really wondering just how well the air horns are going to come out because when you scale that down uh, to 164 scale, it's it's like working with a hair, and I, I don't know if it's going to be practical to try and put it on or if it will even print. Uh, I, I just I don't have a lot of hope for it, but uh, the top and the, the sirens should come out great. And just to make sure, I'm printing a few extra sirens to boot. Okay, the AnyCubic is doing its thing, and this print job should take about uh, 30 minutes or so. So we'll just take a break and come back when it's done. And uh, now that we've got our pieces, they're, they're washed and cured, we can bring it over here. And what I did is on this extended roof, I just made the, the bottom edge flat because it was going to be really hard to uh, get that the, the roof line curve correct. So I figured it would be a lot easier to use uh, the file that you see here, so some sandpaper, wrap it around the body, and use that to kind of contour uh, the bottom of the roof. And uh, that indeed worked really, really well. And so now I'm just gluing it on to the body using some uh, a medium viscosity uh, super glue. Uh, that way it'll help fill the any gaps between the body and the extended roof. And as you can see, it's working fine. Now we can talk about the hole where the sunroof is now, because as you can see, it's still there. And I, in fact, modeled the roof short to make sure I could keep it there. Uh, my, my theory is this. Mother would have wanted a sunroof, okay? I don't know if he had one or not, but if he'd had the option, I'm sure he would have taken a sunroof. So I decided that I would leave it in, and so to accommodate that, I made the extended roof just a hair shorter than it probably should have been. All right, so now I can turn my attention to making sure that the extended top blends in nicely. So I'm using some plastic putty by AK Interactive. Uh, this stuff is great. I'll just put a bead along it all the way around, and then I'll kind of smooth it down and in with my uh, uh, moistened finger, and we can move on.
after uh, smoothing the putty down and uh, removing any of the excess, uh, I'll be able to set this aside to dry, and then we can hit it up with a little bit of sandpaper and make sure that it uh, fills in very nicely. All right, we're at a point here where everything's looking just about uh, as good as it should. Uh, using a little bit of water and a brush and a blue towel, I'm able to go ahead and remove any residual. And now we can set that aside to dry. All right, with that thoroughly dry, I can now turn my attention to the paint booth. Uh, we started this project by giving it a uh, coat of Tamiya Fine Primer. And now I'm just using Tamiya Red uh, gloss red paint and laying down a base coat of red. Um, I'm going to do my normal thing here. I'm going to be uh, laying down a tack coat and then let that uh, flash over. Then I'll start with medium coats and I'll try and finish it up with a really nice smooth wet coat. Um, if you look at Mother's Ambulance, uh, red really is the base color. Uh, then you've got blues, then you've got whites, then you have pinstriping, and so on and so forth. So, uh, easiest bet for me right here is to start by painting the entire thing red. Okay, so I've talked about this in other models, uh, where I'm going to want to put decals over this paint and then trap it all underneath a, a layer of gloss uh, clear coat. So... What I have to do to make sure I don't get any silvering is I've got to make sure that this paint is as smooth as I can possibly make it. So even though it's going to get other layers and whatnot, I really need to pay attention to what I'm doing here and make sure that this red base coat is smooth and glassy. That way the decals will lay down and virtually disappear underneath that uh, clear coat. All right, with the red light on there, and I'm happy with it, I'm going to go ahead and put it on my little baking lamp and let that cure. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and let it sit for a couple days before I begin to mask off where I need to paint blue. Now, the entire base is going to be blue, um, and it's already in primer. So I stand a good chance of having the blues be different colors if I don't primer this first. So after I got the van masked off, what I did is I shot it with another coat of, to me, a fine primer, just so that the, the body and the base would be in the same starting position. That way when I laid down the blue, I should get the same color. If I would tried to put the blue over red on the body and then the blue over like a light colored primer on the base, there's a very good chance you would have seen a big color difference. All right, so nobody really likes to be pulling tape off of a freshly painted vehicle, um, but I think the best time to get this tape off is essentially, uh, as I said before, as soon as I clean my, uh, my airbrush out. As soon as I get that cleaned out, this should have flashed over well enough that I can get the paint, uh, the tape off the paint without uh, damaging it. But if you leave it on too long, it can start to leave adhesive behind on the other painted areas. It can mar things, and it can even uh, kind of give you a rough edge where you just airbrushed, uh, and we don't want any of that. So what I'm doing here is I'm pulling the tape off carefully. I'm pulling it at an oblique angle back and a little bit into the new paint. And that's helping to cut it off nice and clean. And uh, I've just been really, really careful here because this is not where you want to screw up because that means you're probably going to have to start this whole thing over again. Now this is one of the reasons this van uh, was the winner of the uh, uh, position to be the Mother Jugs and Speed Ambulance is the ground effects. The wheel flares and the front flare and everything are all part of the base. So to put the blue that needs to go at the bottom, all I had to do was put a stripe uh, between the wheel wells and around the back 
And that was it. That's all I had to do down there. Uh, once I put the base on there, it will complete the rest of the blue that goes down at the bottom of the ambulance. So it made that a lot easier to do. All right, we can go ahead and put that on the uh, lamp to dry. And now we can turn our attention to the interior. While trying to figure out how to put an ambulance interior in this thing, it was just fortuitous that I had a leftover interior from Mega Build 1. Um, how fortunate was that? And it's going to pay off here in Mega Build 2 because what I'm going to do is I'm going to marry the uh, uh, Leslie Matchbox SNS Cadillac Ambulance Interior to the interior of this green light soon to be Vambulance. Uh, so basically, I'm removing the back seats that they molded into the uh, green light van, and then that's where I will uh, glue down and fit the uh, the back half of the uh, ambulance interior from the matchbox. So by just a little bit of careful trimming, uh, I'm able to go ahead and get a gurney and some equipment and everything that I need over there. And the way it was designed, it was already designed to go over wheels. So that's not going to be an issue whatsoever. And uh, all I got to do is just line everything up, make sure it's trimmed up nice and neat, and then I'll glue these pieces together. All right, so I've got a couple spring clamps here, and I'm just going to put them on the interior to help hold it in place and make sure there's a nice connection between the two pieces. And then I'm just going to use some Tamiya Extra Thin Cement uh, intended for model building. And all I have to do is touch that liquid to the seam between the two parts, and capillary action will pull that cement right through the joint and glue these parts together very, very nicely. Super easy. All right, so if it seems like I'm jumping around a lot, it's because I am. Um, when you're doing a project of this magnitude, you don't really go into it with all the answers. You go into it with sort of an idea, and then you try and figure things out as you go. Uh, once you have it kind of mocked out in your brain, then you can go ahead and start to try and bring it to life. So right here, I'm working on the grill, and this was one of the features of the green light van that made me choose it. The, the grill that came in the green light van was two rows of, like, uh, rectangles, and a top and bottom on the left and a top and bottom on the right were headlights, so it had four headlights, you know, uh, low beams, high beams, two on each side, you know. And uh, I needed four. Mother's Ambulance had four headlights on each side. So this little grid thing worked out very nicely that I was able to keep the two pockets or rectangles on each side that were headlights. And then the two uh, rectangles that were next to them, I was able to turn those into headlights. And then everything else in the middle, I was able to grind away. That way I could make it look like a tube tube grill. And uh, so I just broke out my trusty uh, rotary tool and my X-Acto, and I started scraping material away as best I could and uh, finally ended up with something that looked like Mother's Grill. Okay, here you can see a much better uh, example of what I'm talking about. See how we now have four headlights on either side and an opening in the middle? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pay attention to the opening in the middle, and I pulled out a, a little length of lead wire, and I cut it to length so that it would, you know, uh, I cut several little pieces to length so that it would fit in the middle there. And my idea is to glue them in to that center using a little Elmer's glue so it'll dry clear 
and then I'll lay those little pieces of lead wire in there side by side by side to essentially make a tube grill. So, uh, I'm, you know, I've got all the parts cut. I'm getting a little Elmer's. I'm choosing Elmer's because it's going to hold everything together and it's going to dry perfectly clear and it won't be a problem. And if there is any residual on the, the surface, any squeeze out or anything like that, getting rid of it shouldn't be too, too big an issue. So I've got my little grill. I've got all my little wires cut. And I'm just going to apply a little of the Elmer's into the center. And I, I know this doesn't look like much yet, but in the end, it's going to actually turn out pretty good. All right, so we'll just spread the glue around. And once we have the entire little center section filled with the Elmer's glue, we can start laying the wires in. And the nice thing about the lead wire is it bends so easy because there is a little bit of a contour to this grill. So as I lay the, the lead wires and get them all in there, I can just apply just the slightest bit of pressure and those wires are going to contour themselves uh, to this grill and the Elmer's will hold them in. All right, so just lay the first one in down at the bottom. Kind of make sure it's lined up. And then the next, and the next, and the next. So with a little bit of open time the Elmer's provides, I'm able to make sure everything's lined up right. I'm able to push down on it nice and firmly to make sure it's taking on the contour of the grill. And all of a sudden I have a uh, an eight headlight grill with, um, you know, a tube center. And it looks great. All right, so now it's time to turn our attention to the monumental task of putting the decals on this beast. Um, I got my decals uh, for this from Indiecals. And uh, I did the artwork. I did the measurements. Um, once I figured out what the decals needed to be, I took a piece of plain paper and I wrapped it around the body of the van before I painted it. And I pressed into it really, really hard with my thumbs and I rubbed it down really, really well to get the contour, almost like doing a pencil rubbing. Um, then I took the piece of paper and I traced around all the lines and that gave me my basic dimensions for uh, designing decals. I then designed the decals in Illustrator to um, Indiecal Specs, uh, sent them the art files, and they sent me back the most amazing decals ever. These things were fantastic. Highly recommend them. There will be a link to Indiecals in the description below. But uh, the decaling took uh, several, uh, several passes because I'd have to decal, let it sit, decal, let it sit. Uh, you don't want to be moving things around once you've got them in place. And this is not the easiest part of this model by any stretch. So, uh, you know, again, decals, you soak them in the water, you slide them into place, position them, let them dry. In this case, I was using a, uh, uh, a, a solve set by Walters to help make sure that the decals would conform to the uh, contours of the body. Um, and then I'd let it dry and move on and do the other parts. The uh, the pricing from Indiecals is very reasonable, so I wisely bought two sets of these decals. And yes, I needed two sets of decals. Um, sometimes when you're doing something this complicated, it's it's really easy to screw them up. Don't hesitate. Don't don't go. If you're doing something this big, if you're doing a project like this. Why would you skimp on these decals when they're so vital to the finished product? Get two sets right up front. If you don't don't need them, then good for you. But if you do, this is going to save you a lot of hassle. So I highly recommend uh, getting a second set.
Now, I have to be honest with you, I'm really starting to get excited at this point because my vision, I can actually start to see it now. It's, it's really starting to come, uh, come to life here. Um, yes, there is a little bit. Uh, I, I was off on the wheel wells a little bit. Not enough that these won't work. They're going to work just fine. It just means we have to do a little paintbrush uh, touch-up on the underside of the wheel wells when we're uh, done. But, hey, life is what it is. You know, you work with what you got. Okay, so there you can see the one side is done, and I'm just going to let this sit and dry. Before we move on, we'll, we'll do the front, the other side, and the back, and then we'll be done with the decaling. But for now, let's go ahead and let it dry. <coughs> All right, we're back to the model. The decals are on, and it's dry. And like I told you, um, I, I kind of was off a little bit on my artwork on the uh, wheel wells where it goes around. And it wasn't terrible, nothing that I, I needed to change the decals, but I had some weird bits of white that shouldn't be there. And so I took my uh, uh, Tamiya Blue and just did a little bit of touch-up right there, uh, something that nobody will ever, ever be able to pick out. It's just enough to make, you know, that take it that next step, you know? Anything worth doing is worth doing right. Okay, so once I finished with uh, this little bit of touch-up paint, I let this dry a long time because I didn't want any moisture left on this vehicle so that when I put the clear coat down, I wouldn't have any issues with it. So uh, we put it aside. We made sure it was completely dry, made sure the decals were dry, everything was dry, and then we could go back to the paint booth. This is a place I really get excited is when I start to put the clear coat down because these things always look amazing once I get a nice, beautiful coat of Bright Vision clear coat down. So I'm just mixing up some of the clear with some of the hardener. Uh, I've, I've got a lot here because I'm actually going to be putting it on another project at the same time. So that if it seems like I have an awful lot here, that's why. Uh, okay, so I've loaded up the uh, cup of my airbrush. And the uh, Vambulance is nice and dry. And we can go ahead and start putting down the clear coat. We've got to do the base and the body. Don't forget that base. And remember, it's just a simple process that I do over and over and over again. You, At this point, you've heard me say it ad nauseum that uh, we start with a tack coat, then one or two medium coats, and then we start to work on getting that perfect gloss coat. I don't know if you can really grasp the concept of, of how excited I am right here because um, I, I've had this, this project in my head for a long time beckoning to me. And uh, I, once I found the green light ambulance, I knew it was time to move forward. And so right here, but I, there's two things going on here. I'm super excited, but I'm also super nervous because this is not where I want to screw up. Now, admittedly, if I screw up the clear coat here, I can let it dry. I can color sand it and polish it and then even put more clear coat on it if I want to. Um, but I don't want to do that if I don't have to. I want to get this right. So, yes, the nerves are are just flared up and super tender. Um, but man, am I excited right now. I can't begin to tell you how, how thrilled I am to see this thing coming to life. Now you'll see a lot of filters after they put their clear coat on, if, if they have a, a problem or an anomaly or something, they'll do color sanding. Well, I don't do that. Um, you're going to have to have a pretty ginormous problem before I will hit this up with sandpaper or anything like that. And my reasoning is nothing compares to that fresh, perfectly laid down wet coat of clear. 
all right? I don't care how good you are at the sanding and the polishing. It's never going to be as, as glorious as it will be right out from underneath the gun. So um, even a tiny little blemish. We're talking about a 164th scale car. I can live with that tiny little blemish to have this beautiful, amazing, glorious, shiny finish on this. And fortunately for me, that's exactly what I get with no blemishes, no nothing, nothing to worry about. Okay, so, so I guess it's time to turn back to the interior. That, that poor sucker's been just laying there doing nothing since I glued it together. Um, as you see, though, it did glue together beautifully. It's all perfect. It fits great. Uh, now I just want to do a little detail painting. And yes, I'm absolutely wasting my time here as you're not going to be able to see anything in the back of this van. But hey, you'll know it's there. I'll know it's there. So why not do it? Now, I, I didn't really, uh, you know, I've been in a lot of ambulances and usually there's like a partition between the front and the back. Now, I'm not going to put a partition here. But, you know, the backs are usually kind of white and medical, and the fronts are kind of dark and comfortable. Um, so I'm, I'm doing that split color thing. Uh, it's usually not, it, it looks kind of weird to me, but, it, you know, it's usually not so bad because there's usually that partition. All right, so we can put that aside to dry and turn our attention back to our grill, which is thoroughly dry and has been colored over with my Molotov chrome pen. Um, all I'm doing here now is I've got some uh, glossy white paint on the end of a toothpick and I'm flooding the little headlight uh, pockets with uh, the white to represent the headlights. And that's coming out great, so we can go ahead and put that aside to dry. So now is not the time to uh, get overly excited and... Uh, ruin this project. So I let it sit for uh, several days before I turned to this uh, phase. I wanted to make sure that there was nothing wet that was going to be impacted by me handling the vehicle. So I went ahead and started by getting the glass back in. We got the front glass, the sunroof, the rear glass. Now it did come with little uh, like uh, wing window things for, and side window things for the sides. I decided that I didn't want those in there, so I did not put those back in. Um, but we got the rest of the glass in, and uh, we used a little bit of glue to make sure that everything would stay down and in place. I also took the opportunity to pop the grill into place, and so I'm going to use a little uh, super glue uh, to put it on the back side where the pegs come through the, the body, make sure that's locked in. And I'll do that same thing for for all the bumpers and stuff like that so i know you know how i'm feeling right now and if i somehow screw up and get a uh, a super glue fingerprint on this ambulance i i might just break down and cry um so i'm trying to be really really careful here and uh man every little move i make i i'm just sweating I, you know, I, I feel like a bomb disposal guy right now. And, man, I, I just, ugh, gosh. But I'm going to make it through this, and everything's going to come out okay so, at this point. So I'm, I'm really, really uh, feeling happy. Um, but, man, very nerve-wracking. I got to tell you. Got to be honest. So with all of the guts back in and everything has had a chance to dry, uh, now we can go ahead and we can get that interior back in. We can get the base back on. And here's going to be your first opportunity to see how that base is really going to bring the bottom of the ambulance uh, together. Uh, it, it was so clever of them to have the wheel flares and everything uh, on a whole separate level. That you know, I, I think that was just genius, and it worked out great for this project. So interior goes in. I'm just making sure it's level. Fits nicely. Everything's good.
and I'm happy with everything that's going on right now so now it's time to put the base on and this base has got a couple of tabs that go into the back and then the front drops down over a post and I've drilled that post out and it's ready for a screw and we can get out our little button head screw and our uh, little Allen wrench here and we can just go ahead and screw this thing down and what a momentous occasion this is right here, huh? Oh my gosh, we're so close. I can't believe it. Okay, so the wheels that you saw in that Jeep are in fact the wheels that I decided to use and I had to paint them glossy white. Um, but the tires, I had to swap out the tires. These are more like a street tire, whereas the tires that were on it was more like a... Uh, uh, like an off-road type tire. So I've got those wheels. They're painted glossy white. And I'm just popping them back into the uh, the tires uh, to try and make sure to handle them as little as possible. And here I'm tapping the axle in just so it'll stay far enough. Once I get it threaded through the body and get the other one on the other side, I can really push them down uh, good and snug and get it to all lock together. So, you know, again, I'll just... Uh, tap it in at first and then we'll put them on the, the ambulance. So it all worked out really great. The, the wheels, the tires, everything I picked worked fantastic so I didn't have to do any kind of a, an axle tube or anything. I was able to use the original uh, hole. In fact, the axle that I'm using is the axle that came with the ambulance. That way I would get the correct spacing right out of the chute. So I'm using the uh, the green light axle. I'm using the wheels from that Jeep, and I'm using tires from some other project. I don't know where they came from. So all three pieces came together and gave me the perfect look and fit, and I couldn't be happier. Just trying to keep my big, nasty, grubby fingers off of this as much as possible uh, to push this together and hoping that I don't screw anything up here. And I managed to get through it all in one piece. And there it is. It rolls and it looks fantastic. Oh my gosh, I can't begin to tell you. I'm so excited. <laughs> and believe it or not, there's still quite a bit to do. Okay, so I don't know if you know anything about ambulances, but, you know, obviously I was in the fire service. I know a little bit about them, and those little uh, tubes that are in the extended roof that I modeled, uh, the ones in the front and the back are response lights, so uh, they're getting little red gemstones attached to them to represent the lights. And uh, while they're responding, those things would be alternately flashing, um, you know, side to side so that's what those are and the, the 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 two on each side those are called scene lights and uh so those will be white and the idea is that they can flip those on and light up a, a an incident um with their vehicle um so we're just using some of these little uh gems that you can get at uh, hobby lobby and they're self-adhesive and i'm just kind of sticking them onto the the pre-planned out uh, cans that I put into the top and there you have that <coughs> you know uh, they say the devil is in the details and and whoever came up with that was a genius because in in a, a die cast or um, a, you know any art project or anything like this it really is the, the details that gets people to go, wow, that is amazing. And so these little stones work out fantastic uh, to represent lights and, and what have you. So now what I've got is I have a little redhead. It came off of, a, I think it was an M2. It was an M2 police car, and it had a little um, globe of redhead. And Mother had one... Uh, you know, globe redhead up on the very top of the extended part of the ambulance. So I've got that um, 
and I'm just putting a little bit of uh, super glue on there and hoping that I can get this on in one shot and have it centered. So I've got it lined up and I'm going to plunk it down and pray that I did a good job here. And I'm really happy with the placement. I, I kind of lucked out on that one. Just hold on, make sure it's nice and snug. And so now it's got its globe light. And really, the only thing left to do is the sirens. As, as badly as I wanted the air horns, um, I, I had to pass. They were just too impossible to work with. They were too fragile, and they just weren't worth the effort. But these sirens are most important, and they're, they're working out great. I've colored them with a Molotel chrome pen, and there's going to be two of them on the roof right up in front. And so a little super glue on each one, and hopefully a somewhat steady hand and a pair of tweezers and a toothpick, and we can get these things in place. All right, so now I've, I've mentioned the air horns. I've already told you about the sunroof. I've got to tell you about one other cheat before I get called out on it. Um, Mother's Ambulance had windows on the passenger side, not on both sides, just the passenger side, one in the sliding door and one in the back. While I'm relatively sure I could have put something passable for a window in there, uh, I felt that it was just not going to look right. It was going to not match any of the other glass. It was going to be weird feeling, and it was going to certainly increase my chance for screwing the entire project up. And I, I just ended up opting not to put those windows in. I, I even considered uh, putting them into the decals, but again, they, they would look wrong. And I felt the entire project would look better without them rather than with some half-baked version of them over there. So I opted not to put them in. Um, there were other ambulances that, or, you know, other vans out there that had windows on both sides, but then I'd be filling the ones on the other side, which would be easier, but then I would lose the grill and I would lose the ground effects. And there was just really no perfect option out there for me. So I opted to not put the windows in. So... If you hate the project because of that, I'm sorry. It, it, it was a tough decision, but it's the one I made, and I, I, I don't have any regrets. I think it looks amazing. All right, so we're just going to tweak this last little siren, and once that's done, I think I'm going to call this a day. And now we can go ahead and, and take a look and see what we've actually done here. So, ta-da, here it is, Mother's Ambulance. I hope you love it. <clears throat> all right there it is mother's ambulance from the movie mother's jugs and speed and i cannot tell you how excited i am about having gotten this done how it came out uh, all of that i just love what happened and, and every time it's sitting right here on my desk and every time i come into my little area and i sit down it's right there and i see it and I go, man, I'm so happy with that. I hope you loved it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, click the bell to be notified anytime I release a new video. If you have any questions or comments, ask them down below. I'm going to get out of here because this has been a long video and I know you don't want to hear me talking anymore. So this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions wishing you an amazing, happy day where your wildest dreams come true. Until next time. Be good.